Hi and welcome. I'm Jane Vitale, Director of Education and Youth Programs at North Shore Animal League America. And I'm excited to be here with my colleague, Sean Patrick Malloy, who's the Operations Manager of our Adoption Center. Here at Animal League America, our mission is to rescue, nurture, adopt, and educate. And Sean is here to tell us a little bit about who is sitting in his lap. Thank you very much, Jane. So this is Arnie. Arnie is a great example of the work we do in our pet behavior department, which is a department that I oversee. Um, Arnie came to us as a rescue from a backyard breeder, so which means he really never stepped foot in a house. He didn't live a, a normal dog life, let's say. Um, so when he first came into us, he was very scared because we had a lot of people reaching out to him saying, you know, hey, I, I want to pick you up, I want to exam you, we want to take care of you, make sure, you, make sure you're okay. And that was the, the scariest thing for him because it was brand new. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and that's, that's, I find that so interesting. And it's so, um, you know, people, we, we want to be kind. We see uh, a helpless animal, mm -hmm. some, somebody in need, someone in need. And our first reaction is, right, um, it's almost a self, it's, it's what we want to do. So yeah. we want to like, we want to <laughs> hug. And the intention is good. Yeah. But it's very important, isn't it, that when you are, you know, approaching dogs, just like we do with people, you have to respect space, especially yeah. now, right, yeah. in, in the situation we're in right now. Of course. Um, but you have to evaluate the temperament. Is that what, what oh, you do? Yeah. So we do pet behavior evaluations. And each dog is an individual. Each cat is an individual. So when we do these pet behavior evaluations, you know, we take that into account because they all have different needs. Mm -hmm. um, Arnie, for instance, you know, we, you know, observed him very early on as a dog who needs help from the pet behavior department. Mm -hmm. So I could tell you right now, when he first came in, I didn't think I'd be able to kind of hold him on my lap Aww. and, you know, scratch him all over. And he, you know, he doesn't really care. He's a sweet boy. Aww. Now... But it took a bit of work to get to that point, and you know, it, he was an individual. So he required different things than maybe some of the other dogs we have right. here require. So it's all about, um, as with people, right? Establishing trust. You have to slowly, you can't rush in. You yeah. have to feel your way in, understand the needs of that, of the dog. Mm -hmm. Like we understand the needs of have to understand the needs of people and respect yes. that it's about respect, Absolutely. right? It's not about imposing what you want onto another living creature. Yeah. It's understanding who they are and the needs. Now, I don't believe if you're telling me this, I'm like, I don't believe. Look at this dog. Look at <laughs> look at how how <laughs> calm he is and how you can handle him. It's hard to believe oh, that he boy. was once um, you you couldn't approach him. He was afraid. Yeah. So obviously, you've established that trust. Mm -hmm. There's a loyalty and, of and, course. Res and respect. Now, tell me, um, how did you do that? How did you establish this? What are the first steps you took to help Arnie? So, the first things we th first thing we do is is observations, right? So, and this is a really big point in trust and respect is having him, you know, in a room with us. We sit down on the floor. We barely address him, but we're here for him. Like, mm -hmm. we want him to know we're here for you, but if you're too afraid of us, we're not going to go chase you around. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, and he, he did avoid us to begin with, but each interaction that we did with him where we respected his space didn't overwhelm him on purpose or, you know, kind of make him try to be another dog immediately helps him mm -hmm. grow. And mm -hmm. each positive interaction where we he was like, hey, they're letting me be me, mm -hmm. you know, and we slowly kind of got from there. And then another thing we did was, again, giving him a little bit of, you know, respect and trust and taking things slow is we kept him in an office with staff members who were working at computers. He's little, he's low, he's at the ground. They're working at computers on a desk, so they're up high um, and giving him the space he needs. Mm -hmm. So he you know, really felt like, okay, they're not going to hurt me, you know, because that's ultimately in all animals' minds is when they're fearful or defensive, they believe these bigger creatures as we are are going to hurt them. That's that's what's in their mindset. Now, he may have never been abused, 
but it's kind of a defense mechanism. So we wanted to show him, don't worry about it, buddy. You can just sniff my pant leg while I work on the computer. I'll toss you some treats mm -hmm. and I'll show you that this is a good place to be. And, um, you know, he really developed from there. So you let Arnie be him. Yes. You let him know oh. <laughs> it's okay to be you. And there's a language barrier. He yes. does not speak words. Mm -hmm. um, just like maybe, you know, when we at one time we had the privilege of working with some of the unaccompanied minors mm -hmm. and the immigrant children and they spoke Spanish. We do not, we did not speak the language. But very much the same. You have to let the dog, you have to let, you have to let people know that it's okay, you're safe and it's okay to be who you are. And it's really through energy, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's through an energy that yes. you give off with a child, or they even say with dogs, yeah. dog recognize smiles, although yeah. it's sad that we can't see each other's smile. We need to, yeah. put, we need to have like different um, stick-ons for our masks to let people know how we're feeling, right? And I think that's true too. It's, a, yeah. it's about, body, you did it through body exactly. language, yes. right? Yes. You identified his emotions through the body language exactly. that he was dis displaying. Mm -hmm. So now, this is exciting. So this also, makes it easier for Arnie now to get adopted, right? It does. So um, really what's important is we didn't, you know, take open up our bag of tricks and do the most complex things in the world. We did things that we can talk to an adopter and they can very easily do, you know, have a decompression space, you know, like, you know, you could give him a little bit of space in your house to just kind of sit and hide and be a little fearful of chihuahua mix. I have that space in my house for sure. <laughs> yeah. We all um, need that, right? Yeah, really. We, we need that as people. But, um, you know, give them that space where it's like, hey, I'm not going to go invade your space. I'm going to probably drop off some food and some water oh. and tell you everything's okay. Maybe throw you a toy, you know. And from there, it's just kind of like, you know, every step he takes forward, you just let him know, hey, it's okay. Like, we're doing good. You know, and even in the <laughs> Even in the office, you know, he was really, he was jumping on people's legs before he was really letting them pet him because he had a little bit of personality, but he was having trouble having the confidence to show it. Aww. Now he's kind of wacky, as you can see. A little look, he's not lacking confidence yeah, now, it no. looks like, right? No, and it's really important. And for all the fearful dogs that, you know, we observe, it's the same thing. Like, you know, when we get that, that little bit of personality that flashes out, you know, it's good to, like, not go immediately and be like, Oh, you jumped on me. It's time to play. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and even in, in, in his home. Look, let's say he, you know, this this adopter gets him. You, you want to venture. Um, and uh, he jumps up on the couch. It's not like, oh, I'm going to grab you and put you on my lap. This is the perfect time. It's like, no, he flashed a little bit of confidence. And then from there, you look at him, make a little bit of eye contact, smile at him. Just, yeah. just you know, like, have a positive feel about you. Mm -hmm. And let him be him he'll walk over to you he'll jump up on you he warms up very easily he's a little bit he, he's a little bit uh obsessive over people sometimes Aww. though that's his thing now he went from being afraid of everybody to like if he sees me you know he'll he'll be like oh my god he's coming he's coming he's coming Aww, you know that bond you yeah. build, you know and that's the bond you build yeah. a bond right and i you love what you it. said about eye contact you yeah. make eye contact and yeah. dogs do that with yes. humans right yes. and and we we, we communicate that way. Yes. They actually understand when you make that eye contact, the hand gesture through the through the energy. This has been a lovely, <laughs> lovely, wonderful. Now, would Arnie let me pet him? Or He's he might be a little afraid, so I don't want to impose <laughs> on his space. I do want to hug him. See, I just want to, I want to grab him. I want to hug you. I want to hug you, Arnie. If we you took a couple gorgeous. of minutes, yeah, no, I won't pet do you. that. He would let gonna, you. He I'm does, see, but you see. Him. But you see, actually, he did make eye contact yes, with you. Yes. And I can tell you, which is very sad, but when he first came in, he would face the wall in his oh, kennel. Right. He oh, would avoid so all eye contact. Practice. And that's yeah. body language. That's, right. you know, the same thing, you know, y y and you see it with children, too. Mm -hmm. You know, the, avo the complete avoidance of eye contact. It's, so it's like, you know what, let's take it slow. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's clearly a trust issue here. Right. You know, amongst the other things, it's, it's important. Right. You know, it's important to observe that and go, I'm not going to write that off, but I'm also not going to, like, bum rush that behavior, right, you know? Right, right, No, yeah. and it's so right how you said it. It's the truth with children, and, and that's as, as people, right? We want to, mm -hmm. we want to um, accept our differences, celebrate our uniqueness and our differences, mm -hmm. and sometimes, like they, they're saying, you agree to disagree, and you respect that. And also we want to 
respect space, especially at this time. We want to keep people safe. We want to, um, you know, re respect the wishes of others. And it's the same. It, it, I just I find it fascinating the crossover. We're all animals, right? We're animals too. <laughs> just like just like the dogs, we're all animals. Yeah. And there's so many similarities that we have, and there's so much that our canine companions can actually teach us humans. I believe that they actually humanize so, us. Talking about anxiety in dogs, what about COVID and how we are quarantined and we are home? with our dogs. I know in the beginning my dog was looking at me at first like, when are you going to leave? <laughs> this is too much work. You know, you're, you're, I have to be with you because my dog's with me all the time. Yeah. And if I go up and down stairs a thousand times, Turtle will go up and down stairs a thousand <laughs> times. So he was looking at me like, do I really have to sit with you now 24 hours a day? How, what's going to happen when I go back to work? What's going to happen to Turtle? So something that's really important that everybody just stays aware of is separation anxiety. Read up on it, do some research, it's it's tough. You know, it, it's the kind of behavior that some dogs um, will lose their homes over because, mm -hmm. um, you know, different certain settings like apartments unfortunately become victim to that. But it's important because, you know, dogs love people. And mm -hmm. this happens, with that, believe it or not, some people won't, but this happens with cats too. Well, you know, mm -hmm. I have a cat is obsessed, to, obsessed with me and my wife. And, <laughs> you know, when I start going back to work and when she starts going back to work, she's a teacher, um, I know that he's going to be walking around the house meowing. But uh, um, it's important to recognize that that is a, it's going to be a real problem. Yeah. And it, it's something that we do our research now, um, do, f do a lot of preemptive steps, like pretend to leave. For a little bit, oh, ten minutes, five minutes, um, practice just like straight up just leaving mm -hmm. without addressing the dog. Because mm -hmm. that big goodbye, as good as it feels for you, it's so sad for the dog. Oh, you know, because they right, just got right. so amped up for you. Right. And like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. then you close the door and they're like, but that feels really good. I want more of that feeling. Whereas like you put a Kong or a Chew or, mm -hmm. you know, um, stick something, you know, something for them to chew on. Um, on the ground and uh, you just kind of take a step out they're chewing they're doing their thing and uh, you know they'll turn their head up and be like oh where, you know where'd that person go and it's not as super dramatic they're kind of focused on chewing something they're they're stimulated mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of different st different steps you can take there's a lot of different really great articles online it's 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 gonna be something that is going to be tough for all our dog parents out there right. and especially tough on our, our dogs as well as our cats. And one thing I just want to pick up on because it is so true and it made me think of what we teach in the Mudigrees curriculum is sympathy versus empathy and putting your needs above the other person or yeah. the dog's needs which is when you're leaving you said when you leave yeah. it's not good to be like oh I'm going yeah, there yeah. and that's that sympathy it's just like if I'm um, Say you were to get hurt, and I come to you. Oh yeah. my gosh, Sean, yeah. you're hurt. You have a car. Is that going to make you feel safe? <laughs> no. For me to be calm. Okay, we're going to yeah. take care of this. Exactly. This is what's going to happen now, mm -hmm. and it's going to be good. Everything's going to be all right. And it's kind of that. Th it's that same yes. sort of approach, right? The same approach yeah. is to to be calm send that energy and go. I know with my dog, Turtle, my kids say when I travel, like if I go on business, he will actually sit at the door and wait uh -huh. and just stare out the window. He waits me to come yeah. up. But that's his job. Yeah. I leave, I leave the pack, yeah. and his job, like when I go to work, he sits and he waits at that window for me to come home. That's uh -huh. what he does, yeah. you know. So it's, um, he needs to, everybody needs to get back to work, including, yeah. including our furry friends. <laughs> so again, many thanks. From my heart to yours, Sean Patrick, thank, you, thank so you for all that you do. Thank you for joining <laughs> us here today. You are making this world a better place for sure. So Try thank it. you for all <laughs> thank you for all that you do. And please stay tuned. We're going to be doing more of these interviews with our fellow colleagues, uh, with children, with teachers, and we hope to see you next time. Stay safe, be well. Bye-bye. Okay.